Today we're going to be talking about structure, specifically three-act story structure using a diagram called Freitag's Triangle. You may have seen this shape before. Some people call it the story triangle or the dramatic arc, but its technical name is Freitag's Triangle, named after the 19th century German novelist Gustav Freitag. In this mini lesson, I'll break down each part of the diagram. For now though, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and copy this diagram with its labels on a piece of your own paper. This will be a handy reference later in the mini lesson and also a good way to start getting familiar with the diagram. Go ahead and pause the video now. Let's start our breakdown with ground situation. To paraphrase the writer John Barth, ground situation is the state of affairs pre-existing the action of the story. For example, think of the ongoing feud between the Capulets and the Montagues. Ground situation is all the background about characters and their situation that readers will need in order to make sense of a story. How important is ground situation? To paraphrase Barth again, no ground situation, no story. Allow me to illustrate. Let's say I came up to you and said, today I beat my brother at ping pong. Would you care? Probably not. The statement would mean nothing to you because you don't know anything about the ground situation. But what if I came to you and said, my father was a gold medalist in ping pong in the 1976 Olympics. As his oldest son, I was expected to carry on the family legacy. He started training me as soon as I could stand. When I was one, he duct taped a paddle to my hand. By the time I was five, I was playing in tournaments against teenagers and winning. I loved it. Dominating at ping pong was all I ever wanted to do. But no matter how good I got, I could not beat my younger brother. He never practiced. He couldn't have cared less about ping pong. He only picked up a paddle once a year to play me on my own birthday. And once he beat me, he would put the paddle down until the next year. Last year, he beat me like usual. But instead of smashing my paddle to bits like I normally did, I went on a pilgrimage. With nothing but the clothes on my back, I traveled to the highest mountain in Nepal, where I studied at the feet of, the, of a blind ping pong master. For an entire year, I trained in a cave on a table carved from rock salt. I played blindfolded. I played with bobcats chained to my legs. I made my own ping pong balls out of yak horn shavings. I traveled back to America two days ago, just in time for my birthday, when I played my little brother in our annual game and for the first time I beat him. Would you care about my story now? Well, you might, now that you understand the context for the game who we were and why it mattered. Ground situation is like soil and the story is a plant. It's hard to grow a plant without soil. One more note about ground situation before we move on. Although Freitag's triangle looks linear, the parts don't have to be arranged in that order in a real story. For example, ground situation does not have to come first. Instead, a story might begin in media res. That's a Latin phrase meaning in the midst of things. You're familiar with this technique if you have ever watched television. Imagine a show that opens with two guys crouched behind a dumpster while gunfire rings out all around them. One of the guys yells at the other guy, I told you we shouldn't have come here. Then the image pauses and words appear on the screen. 12 hours earlier, it says and we jump back in time to find out what led them to this spot. In other words, we still get the ground situation, it just doesn't come first. It might not all come in one piece either. Sometimes writers will break up ground situation and scatter it like breadcrumbs across the story. Okay, onto the inciting incident. This is a disruption that sets the present action of the story in motion. If the ground situation is a powder keg, the inciting incident is the spark. If ground situation is once upon a time, there was a princess who wanted to be a fish. The inciting incident is one day a witch knocked on her door. 
Look for that phrase, one day. You'll be surprised how often it's used to signal the inciting incident. Rising action is the present action of the story. Something has happened to disrupt the world as it was, and now the character or characters have to deal with it. As I mentioned with ground situation, rising action does not have to come in the order that the linear diagram seems to imply, and it doesn't have to come in one unbroken stretch. A story can have a lot of turning points, but only one can be the climax, the decisive turning point near the end, the one the whole story has been building up to. Sometimes a climax is easy to identify, like when it's a boss battle. Other times it's more subtle and easy to miss, like when a main character blows his last chance to change. Often, the exact moment of a climax can be arguable, but when it's not as obvious as a boss battle, it can help to look for a moment of decision or realization. As I mentioned at the beginning, Freitag's triangle is a way to represent three-act structure. Here's another way to think of three-act structure. Do you see ground situation on your diagram? You can think of that as Act 1. Act 1 portrays the world as it is before the disruption that will set the story in motion. The inciting incident is the disruption that initiates Act 2. Act 2 portrays the world disturbed or disrupted. Rising action is what happens when characters struggle with this disruption. The climax moves us into Act 3, in which the world is restored to a new equilibrium, although nothing will ever be as it once was. The world of Act 3 is not the same as the world of Act 1. The disruption and the resulting struggle have changed the world in its characters. Okay, Let's apply what we're learning here to an old story you probably know by heart. Frosty the Snowman. I'll go through the story without the thumpity thump thumps to show you how it maps to Freitag's triangle. Along the way, I'll point out some other moves this story is making so you might steal them for your own work. Frosty the Snowman was a jolly happy soul with a corncob pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. Okay, we're in ground situation here, right? This is the pre-existing state of affairs before the present action of the story. Frosty the Snowman is a fairy tale, they say. He was made of snow, but the children know how he came to life one day. One day. Did I not tell you how often that phrase is used to signal the inciting incident? Here we're lurching into Act 2. Snowman comes to life, the world is disrupted. One other note. Some people say there are only two story archetypes, leaving home and stranger comes to town. This theory is a little too reductive for my taste, but in any case, Frosty the Snowman is definitely a stranger comes to town story. There must have been some magic in that old silk hat they found, for when they placed it on his head, he began to dance around. You can create narrative energy by connecting characters. You can also create narrative energy by disconnecting characters. The creators of the, f of the show, Friends, knew this. One of the rules for the writers on that show was, don't let Ross and Rachel stay together because they knew how much narrative energy could be created by connecting and disconnecting them again and again. I bring this up now because here we see the kids connecting with Frosty. Stay tuned for a disconnection. Frosty the snowman knew the sun was hot that day, so we said, let's run and we'll have some fun before I melt away. Okay, we've got a lot going on here. First of all, we've got some conflict, some tension. The sun's going to be a problem for the snowman. We've also got some heavy foreshadowing. When Frosty says, before I melt away, he's essentially prophesying his own death. 
And in terms of Freitag's triangle, we're still in the territory of rising action. Down to the village with a broomstick in his hand, running here and there all around the square saying, catch me if you can. So we're seeing a deepening connection with the kids. He led them down the streets of town right to the traffic cop, and he only paused a moment when he heard him holler, stop. Okay, you might remember that rising action is often characterized by the complication of conflict. Rarely does conflict stay the same for a whole story. It evolves, it metastasizes. Just a moment ago, the conflict was centered on the sun. Now, the sun is still a problem, but we've got another layer, a cop yelling at him to stop. This direct conflict forces Frosty to make a decision. Do I stop or do I go? He goes, of course. We know this already from the phrase, he only paused a moment. I mark his decision to keep going, this final turning point, as the climax. For Frosty the Snowman had to hurry on his way, but he waved goodbye saying, don't you cry, I'll be back again someday. This ending provides the story with balance through some counterpointing. Earlier, we saw Frosty's connection with the kids. Here we see uh, their disconnection. Also, I mentioned this was a stranger comes to town story. In the first part of this story, the stranger sailed into town at the end, he's sailing right back out. Sailing out to his death from melting, by the way, which he prophesied earlier. Because that prophecy is coming true, we believe this prophecy about his resurrection. This kind of parallel structure in stories is sometimes called rhyming action. There, you had no idea that Frosty the Snowman was so complex and dark, did you? To further your own learning, I'd like you to apply Freitag's Triangle to a, another short old story and then to your own work. Head over to Canvas to see the guiding questions for this assignment, which will be due before the start of class. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed these craft notes. Oh.